I'll reintroduce myself, Dave. My name is David Lewis. I've uh, started here. This is the first exhibition at the Gallery of Thornton Dial, um, an artist I had been working with previously. I want, um, while Christopher did such a beautiful job of leading us through Lorna's very, um, very beautiful, very haunting, and very precise exhibition with the theme of the meteor, and even this very precise investigation of one image, one sensory kind of layout with smell and sound preceding touch. I would ask that we expand the lens now, because this exhibition is a survey, not of a living artist, at a specific moment in his or her career, <coughs> but a survey of a life's work of work, and it begins with the earliest of Gordon Dial's works and goes essentially to the end of his career. So it has a lot of material ranging over a whole life's achievement and is designed to introduce or reintroduce or further our knowledge of this artist's incredible work. And we should begin, therefore, with these two tigers from 1988. Thornton Dahl was born in Alabama, in the Mel, Alabama, in 1928. He was raised not by his mother, but by women in his mother's uh, family. He was raised to a sharecropping rural family in the Jim Crow South. He worked in Bessemer as a welder. There was a train factory in Bessemer, the Pullman plant, and he worked in Bessemer, Alabama as a welder until that plant closed sometime around 1980, where he began making, using his ability to weld to make outdoor furniture with his family. And that furniture already shows all sorts of artistic elements, like the feet and legs of outdoor benches becoming feet. So around, the, around 1988, he starts making and quickly exhibiting art. And these are the earliest examples, or from the earliest phase. And the early phase of Thornton Dial's work, which goes from 1980 until 1993, is characterized by the image of the tiger. And these, these are two quote-unquote tiger paintings that we see here. Uh, I want to note that Thornton Dial, right from the start of his career, was extremely reflexive as an artist, and that each one of these works, however visually exuberant and materially overwhelming they might first seem, had layers and layers of symbols and allegories, and uh, ornate, almost Faulknerian structures, almost Gothic edifices of symbol and storytelling. And one of the, one of the two stories that Dial seizes upon at the very start of his career is this image of the tiger as Dial himself, but ultimately as all of us, as any artist, as anyone struggling, as anyone facing, using energy and poetry and personal will to overcome any sort of challenge. So as Amiri Baraka wrote in a, in a great essay in the 1993 catalog, we are all this tiger, and that's of course a very universal poetic theme. He also reflects upon the tiger's relationship to all of us, to the audience. So in this work called Alone in the Jungle, one man sees the tiger a cat. He uses his extraordinary ability to paint to create this image of the jungle around the tiger, but there's also a face. There's a figure lurking in the bushes looking at Dial. So he, it's not simply a tiger, but the relationship between the tiger and the audience, a furtive audience member in this case. And more overtly, in this work here, which is called uh, People and Monkeys Love the Tiger Cat. I would also note that this is an American flag, so there's that level of symbolic um, approach. You have uh, faces here, white faces, noticeably, monkeys on either side, and uh, most suggestively, a serpent, a snake at the top of the uh, canvas that is biting the tiger's tail. So he's telling a very complicated story, not just about himself heroically as a tiger, but about the idea of himself as an African-American artist or figure or performer in a very fraught landscape with rewards and perils, which is, of course, America. 
Okay, so those are the tigers. I would note that the tigers already is using rope carpet. So even in this early phase, he's moving, he's moving from painting into assemblage. And I would invite us to turn to, let's go to this one here. This is from 1989, so also early, but I would note that mature dial is characterized not so much by painting, but by assemblage and by painting within assemblage. So another theme that dial picks up throughout this work, is the sound of it? Okay. Um, is the theme of labor. Dial having built in a welder, a uh, very physically gifted maker of things, is very, very interested in the relationship between labor, particularly working class, manual, unacknowledged labor, which he and his family were, of course, uh, did their whole lives, and farming to London, and artistic labor of all kinds. So in this, this work is called The Works of the United States, and functions as a kind of pendant, a kind of celebratory uh, image of all the unacknowledged acts of working class labor in the country. And Dial has included Christian here as a kind of magical or shamanic uh, evocation of rest for all these unacknowledged laborers, which of course himself and so many members of this community were. If you turn to the corner, there are two works that take on the idea of labor, specifically in relationship to women's labor and women's art making. The work from 2004, on the, on the right corner, is called In the Mem Sorry, the Memory of the Ladies Who Gave Us a Good Life. And that is a celebration of women's labor, specifically. So, the one here. So, in the issue of this work, I would say we're probably going to have to tell the story. And this is all the things that Dial was on women perform. Uh, washing, fencing, mending, sewing, etc. This is an ode not just to labor in general, but to women as well. This work here, probably the main thing of all those things from 2008, is Dial's tribute to a specific kind of labor which is quilt making, and specifically the quilt of the teeth that who he had relationships with creatively and collaboratively. And what he's done is he's made uh, painting here on a canvas as a kind of quilt by combining all these fabric elements together with uh, rope and painting on top of them. Okay, so that, any questions about any of this so far? Let's go to the strange group and then we'll talk about the kind of art of the whole moment. Actually, let's, yeah, let's talk about both of these and then I'll conclude with the show uh, theme. This is a work from 2004. So, uh, Dial had a show in the museum, which was a collaboration with the American Folk Art Museum in 1993. He was celebrated, but after 1993, not as a contemporary artist, despite what I would argue is the, the obvious, uh, undeniable contemporaneity of his work, and despite the fact that he was beloved and celebrated by many contemporary artists. What he would instead have a career on a sort of alternate track, which includes in their catalogs on the front two monographic shows at Indianapolis and at the Houston MFA in 2005 and 2011. In 2004, Dial made two uh, strange fruit paintings. The title, of course, will look to the Billie Holiday song from the 1930s about lynching. And they, they're also reflective about our history, the palette here referring to Matisse, to the Western still life tradition in these clusters of grapes, which he crafts from discarded lids of paint cans. 
for a typical dot to take discarded materials and reuse them for symbolic and material valorization. And here is a, a late work called Mr. Dodd's America. It's a very magisterial summation of his view. It's inspired of American political and social life. It was inspired by his watching the Occupy Wall Street um, protests on television in 2011. And what you have in this is three figures seated, constructed around a table, calculator, two golden eagles, a uh, book that says the rebirth of America, symbols of DC, uh, Abraham Lincoln, the Capitol building, the clock at midnight, the slave ship on the lower right, his signature. Okay, um, any questions at this point? His contemporaries, like who was he hanging out with? Okay, so that, that's, a very, that's a very good, and uh, that's a question that would under some circumstances of this very long winded answer because it's, he's hanging out with he's unlike some he's hanging out with the artists in his community. So although he show, he exhibits in New York and globally, he's kind of limited by various circumstances to that conversation. And that's what the title of the show is speaking to the visible and the invisible. There's an obvious visual, I'm sorry, visible appeal to Dial's work and any kind of urgency visually. There are not um, withholding works in, in any way. On the other hand, the story of Dial's career, the limitations he faced, the combination of, of celebration and limitation that um, formed the path of his career until now, uh, point to a lot of things that are not visible and are not clearly seen unless you investigate them. So I hope that provides a kind of answer. Any other questions? <laughs>